Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Swuss. Uh, in this video, I'm doing Rays Marlins, but we'll go through all of Tuesday's baseball, all 15 games. That'll be on the live show at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. If you're able to make it, we'd love to see in the comments. Rays Marlins in Miami. Let's go. Welcome to The Swiss. The Swiss. Hey, get the sauce. All right, like I said, it's Tampa on the road in Miami. Marlins are short home dogs here, plus 100. Total sitting at seven and a half. Pitching for the Rays, we got Pepe Le Pew, Ryan Pepio, Jesus Lazardo on the mound for the fish. Uh, let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet. And according to the model, we are deadlocked after five innings. 1.93 to 1.93. Final score slightly towards the Rays, 3.9 to 3.71. All right, so let's take a look at this game. Um, we'll start with the matchup for Jesus Lazardo against the Rays' bats. Uh, Lazardo's got mediocre numbers on the year, 418 ERA and a 114 whip, 381 expected FIP. I mean, pretty average. He does seem to be turning it on as of late. In his last five starts, he's got a 199 ERA, an 088 whip, and a 347 expected FIP. So Lazardo has definitely been dealing recently. That's in his last five starts. Uh, in his last three starts at home in Miami, even more impressive. His last three home starts, an 092 ERA, an 066 whip, and a 293 expected FIP. He's been dealing at home. And this Rays lineup, I mean, it's just not what it was last year against lefties. Uh, now, if you look at their numbers against left-handed pitching in the last 30 days, 11th in WRC+, 13th in OPS, 13th in WOBA. But those numbers are pretty heavily skewed by their game against the Mets. They absolutely hammered Jose Quintana. Uh, they scored eight runs on him. That was at home at the Trop. If you take out that start against Jose Quintana, the last seven lefty starters to pitch in the Rays not named Quintana, 40 and two-thirds innings pitch, a 199 ERA and a 116 whip. So take out that one game at home against the Mets when Katana pitched, and lefty starters have just been dealing against the Rays. Uh, not to mention this game's on the road in Miami, and the Rays, they haven't been hitting on the road, period, but specifically lefties on the road. One of the worst lineups in baseball against lefties on the road. 29th in WRC+, plus, 30th in isolated power, 28th in on-base percentage. The last five lefty starters that the Rays have seen on the road, so away from Tampa, 29 in the third innings pitch, 215 ERA and a 116 whip. So they are not touching lefty starters away from Tampa. And you can see here, that's a huge drop off in production if you compare it to their numbers against lefties at home. I mean, at home against lefties, fourth in WRC plus, 15th in isolated power, eighth in on base percentage. So they can hit lefties in Tampa, um, but on the road, not so much. You can see here, last nine lefty starters to face the Rays at the Trop, 544 ERA and a 149 whip. So they're hitting lefty starters at home. But the fact that this game's on the road in Miami and Lazardo is on one right now, absolutely dealing at home. I think the Rays might have zero runs on the board through five innings. Now on the other side, we got Ryan Pepio. Uh, got some decent numbers on the season. 388 ERA, 095 whip, and a 380 expected FIP. This start is on the road, though, and his two road starts have been out of this world. Check this out. Now, we're only talking about a two-game sample size. He only has two road starts, but those two starts were at Coors Field, which, as we know, one of the toughest places for a starting pitcher to go pitch, and the other one's at Milwaukee. The Brewers are second in the MLB in, o in WRC Plus and OPS against right-handed pitching, second to only the Yankees. So he's had two road starts, and they weren't easy road starts. His numbers in those starts, an even zero ERA, 130 Woba, a 45% strikeout rate, and an 042 whip, 119 expected fit. So Ryan Pepio in his two road starts has been literally untouchable. Now it's just two starts. Shouldn't throw him a parade for it, but it's definitely impressive here. And it's important to take note of that. He's on the road here against Miami. And by the way, Miami's been terrible this year. They're just 25th in WRC plus against right-handed pitching. The reason I bring that up pepio has been great when he sees bad lineups. On the season against bottom 10 lineups versus righties, he's got a 075 ERA and 075 whip and a 217 expected fit. So pepio has been elite on the road and he's been elite against bad lineups. Two things that are true here. The last nine righty starters to pitch against the Marlins, they combined for a 204 ERA and a 118 whip. So they're not getting to righty starters anyway. Really looks like pepio should deal here, which means I love the matchup for both starting pitchers. So I, I, this first five total sitting at four, I really like playing the four and a half. So the fours are a little sketchy, but I find it hard to believe we're going to see a lot of runs early here. So I'm thinking low scoring game early. Uh, when we take a look at the bullpen matchup, Edge definitely goes to the Marlins. In the last 14 days, they're ninth, fifth, and 12th in ERA, Woba, and expected FIP. Tampa, 
bottom 10 in all three categories. But when we look at home away splits, you can see the Rays bullpen has actually been weirdly really good on the road. In the last 30 days, the Rays are first in ERA, first in Woba, first in expected FIP on the road, which is just crazy, crazy to see because their bullpen hasn't even been good. They're just weirdly good on the road. So I think both bullpens should deal as well, which is why I guess we got to go under here. It's down at seven and a half, but it's down at seven and a half for a reason. So I like the under here. And Prop Beaver wrote down his pick. He likes the under also. So let's go under seven and a half in this game. Maybe first five under four if you want to keep it to five. But I think both bullpens should be fine. Uh, both had a day off, so they should be rested. Let's go under seven and a half. Like I said earlier, live show, four o'clock p.m. Eastern time. We'll go through every single game, make our final decisions. If you're able to make it, we'd love to see in the comments. If you want my top bets or top bets from anyone on the staff here. Oh, or if you want to join the betting league, I'll put a clip up that explains what that is right here. All right, got a quick announcement to make. Pretty excited about this. I've been um, trying to work it out, the details for it for a while. I uh, was really trying to get it ready for football season, but I think I, I have it ready to go now. So starting Monday, we're going to have a weekly betting league in the Discord. So Monday through Friday is the quote unquote regular season. On Monday, you'll be assigned an opponent and it's you versus that person, three bets a person. Whoever has more earnings gets a win. Whoever has less earnings gets a loss. Tuesday, you'll be assigned a new opponent. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so forth and so on. Now, at the end of the week, at, at, after Friday, the four people that have the best records, obviously tiebreakers would be overall earnings, would break ties. Get to the playoffs, which is on the weekends. Saturday, there's four people that make the playoffs. One seed versus four seed, two versus three. Sunday is the championship. Winner of that week gets 100 bucks. Everything resets. New league starts on Monday. So really excited about this. Um, if you're in the Discord, it's free to enter. You know, it doesn't cost anything to enter. But yeah, I just want to let everyone know, I think I have it ready. So Monday, we'll be up and rolling. I haven't thought of a name yet, but I'll think of something fun. So yeah, if you want the top bets, if you want to join the Discord, you want to get in on the betting league, any of that, head over to kylecrims.com and sign up for Sauce Network Plus. Let's have ourselves a nice Tuesday. See you on the live show. Remember to bet responsibly.